organic, unpredictable, unknown, lovely, beautiful, a sense of fulfillment. This is part of the pleasures of life and not the chores of life. Coming up on Daily Iowan TV, it's Fire Prevention Week, and we'll have some helpful tips on how to keep yourself safe. Plus, we'll take you to the state capitol to check out Sunday's Occupy Iowa protest. And in sports, we'll have an inside look at the Hawkeye football team's recruiting process. That's all coming your way next. Daily Iowa TV starts now. Thanks for tuning in to your Monday edition of Daily Iowan TV, your television news, sports, and weather source for the Daily Iowan. I'm Dana Davidson. And I'm John Detcott. National Fire Prevention Week kicked off Monday, and the Iowa City Fire Department is using the opportunity to educate people on proper fire prevention tactics. Daily Iowan TV's Reed Chandler dropped by the downtown station to preview the week's events. Only three weeks ago, the apartments above Brugger's Bagels behind me in downtown Iowa City caught fire, shutting down the entire building and the business of Brugger's Bagels, as well as damaging four other surrounding businesses. This week is National Fire Prevention Week, and the Iowa City Fire Department is as dedicated as ever to prevent future fires from taking place. Fire Prevention Week is a national event sponsoring fire safety and preventative tactics. While every fire station in the U.S. may be commemorating this event, the origins of Fire Prevention Week are especially meaningful in the Midwest. Fire Prevention Week is the time of year where we commemorate the uh, history of the Great Chicago Fire and the number of people lost, the homes lost, the property damaged. This year's theme is Protect Your Family from Fire, and the Iowa City Fire Department delivers this message to the community throughout the week. Locally, what we do is we go to all the grade schools in the area and we do a Fire Prevention Week presentation. For Iowa City, the recent opening of Fire Station 4 means faster aid to local fire emergencies. Staffing wise, this provided an additional nine personnel for that area of town as a station. So we'll have an engine and a rescue running out of there. So what that does for us on that northeast part of town is reduces our response times drastically. As of now, the fire department is busy with the aftermath of the Brugger's Bagel fire several weeks back, assessing the damage and origin of the disaster. It's been a slow process. There's a lot of debris. There's a number of people that need to be notified of the situation. For the Iowa City Fire Department, devastating fires and hopeful station additions make for an interesting week. Reed Chandler, Daily Iowa TV. And officials have still not decided whether they want to restore the Brugger's Bagels building that burned down in September. Today, Governor Terry Branstad announced the creation of a new website that allows people to track the progress of all open records requests. The announcement comes almost two months after Iowa Democrats accused the governor's office of deliberately leaving open record requests unfiled, specifically ones pertaining to expenses from Branstad's tours around the state. Branstead denied those allegations and says the new website marks a level of transparency never before seen from a governor's office. And former governor and current secretary of agriculture Tom Vilsack held a press conference Monday to announce his support for President Obama's new stimulus plan, which Vilsack says would bring $500 million into the state. Vilsack said the money could go to infrastructure projects like repairing the state's failing bridges, an initiative he said could employ nearly 7,000 construction workers. Vilsack said infrastructure projects are crucial and cannot wait until the next election cycle. Iowa's bridges currently rank third worst in the nation, with one in every five in need of some form of repair. The Occupy Iowa movement resulted in 32 arrests on Sunday night. The protesters occupied the state capitol in Des Moines as an offshoot of the Occupy Wall Street movement in New York. Around 350 people showed up to the Capitol to protest. I mean, at its heart, it's about the corporate greed, the corporate collusion, the corruption that goes on, um, where basically our politicians are bought out. And uh... Protesters said the group came together spontaneously and said they plan to continue the protest indefinitely. Tents were set up early Sunday evening and people were encouraged to go home and bring back more tents. Des Moines Police and state troopers began arresting and removing protesters after they refused to leave the Capitol grounds after 11 o'clock. Read tomorrow's Daily Iowan for more coverage on the protesters who were arrested.
still to come on Daily Iowan TV to find out how the UI hopes a major exploration will help keep more students in school. And Iowa's black and gold colors turned pink over the weekend. We'll explain later in sports. But first, Daily Iowa TV's Allie Holcamp joins us in the studio for a look at your local weather forecast. Allie? Thanks, John. Tomorrow might not be as nice as what we had the last week or so. Temps should be right around 62 in the morning with a 40% chance of rain. Same thing in the afternoon with temperatures warming up a bit to a high of 74. In the evening, the clouds should move out and we should be looking at temperatures around 63. On Wednesday, the poor weather is expected to continue with a 60% chance of rain and a high of 69. Things will continue to cool off with highs dipping to the mid to lower 60s. We'll have a high of just 61 on Friday. After that, though, things should warm up again with highs in the mid 60s Saturday and Sunday, and we should be back to 68 by Monday. That's your check of the weather. Back to you guys at the desk. For years, the UI retention rate has been among the lowest in the Big Ten, with officials blaming poor welcoming efforts. Recently, the UI has made efforts to create more programs and events designed to make students feel more comfortable and connected here on the UI campus. Daily Iowa TV's Josh Bolander tells us why helping a student make an important decision early on can lead to more success down the road. This afternoon, University of Iowa officials, faculty members, and directors from student life organizations gathered at the Iowa Memorial Union to educate students on the different programs the UI offers during the Exploring Majors Fair for incoming high school students. We had about uh, 800 students and their parents today from all over the country, a lot from Iowa and Illinois, but as far away as California and Texas. Although the fair has been going on for over 25 years, their size and importance has grown recently, which coincidentally or not coincides with the university's highest retention rate they have seen in decades. Students at the fair are not just receiving one-on-one -on -one interaction with UI officials, but are also receiving personalized materials produced by the Office of Admissions, which talk about description of courses, types of classes, job opportunities, and why each program might be a more enjoyable choice for their futures here on the UI campus. We have the academic fair today just after lunch to explore all the different academic programs and the student services that we offer at the university. Even with the university's 86.28 retention rate falling just percentage points shy of the 87% five-year goal they set in 2009, the university is still in the lower half of the Big Ten. But with events like today and positive news continuing to surface, the future looks bright for the Hawkeyes. Josh Bolander, Daily Iowan TV. The UI will offer another Exploring Majors Fair this Friday at the IMU. Early voting for this year's city council election begins Tuesday. Up for election this year are current Mayor Matt Hayek as well as UI student Raj Patel who recently picked up an endorsement from the UI student government. Tomorrow is also the primary for those running for the council's at-large seats. The top four finishers in tomorrow's primary will move on and there are currently seven at-large candidates including Hayek and Patel. The regular election date is still set for November 8th. Some good news on the economy. On Monday, the Dow Jones was up 2.9% following positive signs of an economic turnaround in Europe. Over the weekend, European leaders said they have come up with a plan to curb the area's debt issues. That set stocks soaring in both sides of the Atlantic, but experts are still concerned about the announcements of specific details. They said that any, any sort of unified plan is encouraging. And now Daily Iowa TV Sports Director Jake Abrams joins us at the desk. And Jake, last few years it was all Hawks in the Hawks versus Penn State matchups, but this weekend certainly wasn't the case. Yeah, Joe Paterno finally beat Kirk Ferentz. And guys, we missed a lot of key players from previous seasons who've stepped up in the past. They were really missed on Saturday. And in college football, teams change year to year. There are no trades, no contracts, and no payroll. Some seasons you're dominant and some you're defeated. That's what makes the NCAA so great. A program is built for four years at a time, and you never know when an individual player will shine. Daily Iowa TV Sports' Tyler Culver takes a look at the process the Iowa football coaches go through when finding the right players. 110 players make up the 2011 Iowa football roster coming from 21 different states and one Canadian province. Those numbers make up for busy off season for the Iowa football coaches. And even after all the trouble of getting the recruits on campus, once here many times coaches still don't know exactly what they've brought in. Uh, you see stuff on a screen that it shows up and boy it didn't look like that at all or whatever. Sometimes uh, you get some good surprises. This season, fifth year senior Thomas Nardo has seen the field for the first time in his career and has been making the most of it, tallying 11 tackles versus Louisiana Monroe. How Nardo ended up a hawk, though, is something Ferentz still can't sum up. I still can't explain that, and I, uh, I'm glad he came. Uh... Whether they are a walk-on or a highly touted recruit, everyone gets the same treatment once they're in Iowa City. I mean, we treat everybody on our team. If they're on our team, they're on our team. There's no, like, you know, uh, 
locker room down the hall or you know you guys get second second grade equipment and things like that if, if you're on the team you get you know everybody's on the team with 47 walk-ons currently on the roster, it's likely that Hawkeye fans will see more great stories of walk-ons rising up to the challenge and getting playing time in years to come. Tyler Culver, Daily Iowa TV Sports. Now, Iowa volleyball usually wears its school's black and gold during games, but this past weekend there was a hint of pink around Carver Hawkeye Arena. Ian Martin tells us why. Notice anything different about the seemingly usual Adrian Peterson touchdown? Perhaps a hint of pink? The NFL has been promoting breast cancer awareness all month, but Iowa City had a bit of breast cancer awareness of its own on Friday and Saturday night as the volleyball and soccer teams held their annual pink matches featuring pink warm-ups, pink socks, and yes, even pink stanchion guards. The pink jerseys weren't also just limited to Iowa as Indiana libero Caitlin Cox wore a bright pink jersey as well as the rest of her teammates wearing pink headbands. Now band members and crowd members had fun with the thousand free pink headbands that were given away but there was a serious side to the night. Breast cancer survivors were honored at halftime including student assistant coach Paige Stevens' mother which Paige said stirred her emotions. It definitely means no a lot way. just because my mom is here to be able to watch the game. And, I mean, my grandma was at home, you know, just having them still be here and, you know, having them have survived through um, what they went through is really, uh, really emotionally um, good. And and all this pink did raise some money as $1 from every ticket sold was donated to the UI hospital and clinics. Ian Martin, Daily Iowa TV Sports. And it's official, the second annual striped football game will be held this Saturday when the Wildcats come into Kinnick Stadium. So look online at HawkeyeSports.com to find out what color shirt your seat section has been assigned to. For more on that, tune into Daily Iowa TV pregame on Thursday night. And guys, last year against Penn State, this turned out to be awesome. So students, wear black on Saturday. The student section will be black. And if everyone participates, uh, Kinnick Stadium is going to look awesome. It looked great last year. I was, I was surprised by the turnout and how well well, it worked, and so wear black, students. Hopefully we can do that again. <laughs> Thanks. Yep. And only with Daily Iowan TV can you get a sneak peek at Tuesday's pages of the Daily Iowan. Read about why Republican presidential candidate Ron Paul wants to abolish the gold standard, plus find out why more and more illegal immigrants are being arrested in North Liberty. And before we go, here's one last look at tomorrow's forecast. Tomorrow we'll see a high of 74 degrees with a low of 62 degrees and a 40% chance of rain. That's your latest edition of Daily Iowan TV. Be sure to check us out at the same time tomorrow or anytime online at dailyiowan.com. For Daily Iowan TV, thanks for watching and have a great day.